process where growth has, set, it has settled, the economy I was starting to grow in different areas and taking off before COVID hit us. So COVID is a temporary shock. What has happened when a temporary shock hit you? Think about COVID hitting the human body. If you have your apocalypse, your horsemen of health, we we'll call them that, high blood pressure, <coughs> that's the death. Cholesterol in your arteries, that is like having no reserves in your, in, 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 to live a pen. Bad um, unsustainable physical, that is like diabetes. Along come COVID and hit you, what happened? Well, certainly you have a less chance of recovering than a person who has none of those. And it's just the economy, because when the economy, COVID hit us now, we are stand a much stronger chance of recovering. And that is why Moody's very recently, a few days ago, Greater Barbados are having a stable outlook. In the midst of this pandemic, once we hold strain and take care of each other and survive this, we will come out better on the other end. And that is why I can say safely, these bonds will not be restructured, restructured because Barbados implanted the restructure. And one final note, when we restructure the last debt, $12 billion, we will save a billion dollars a year going forward for the next how much years? We wrote into the contracts too that should Barbados ever default, one payment Barbados miss, or miss two M, three MS reviews, or ever re restructure, all those savings have to be paid back to the holders of that debt. So we definitely ain't going there. So you don't have to worry about this being re uh, restructured. The final feature, so let me just repeat them quick. Our basic feature is bond a four year instrument, earning 5% every year for six. For four, for four years, paying semi-annually, no interest on that, in, um, no tax on that interest, fully tradable, protected for debt restructure, and finally, after two years, government stands ready to buy back the bond if you should so want to redeem it. What are the percentage now we, are, we, are, we have worked applying to persons? Um, if you earn, and this net of your, what I want to say is, travel and thing, that's not in there, is net of taxes after taxes come out, after NSS come out, and you're ready to take home your pay check. Your net pay. If you earn between less than 36,000 net, which is less than 3,000 a month net, you will get your full salary in cash to the bank in your preferred bank account. Zero in bills, in, in bonds. However, recognizing that this is really a good savings opportunity then you can opt for some. You might say, well, give me 5%. Give me $200 on my salary, give me three, and we will accommodate that. Between 36,000 and 50,000, which is between 3,000 a month and $4,166 a month, you will get 93% as cash in your bank account in Broad Street or credit union, wherever you, you buy, and you will get 7% as a bond in your bond account. So now you don't just got a bank account or credit union account, you got a bond account at the central bank who will then send you a monthly statement showing you what you have. And if you get between 50,000 and 100,000, which is between 4,166 a month and 8,333 a month, you will get 88% of your salary as cash and 12% as a bond. And if you're in the upper part now where you get more than 100,000 or more than 8,333 per month, net of NAS and taxes, you get 83% in your account in Broad Street, your bank account, and your bond account, now you get 17% as bond. That will allow us to, to, to get the fiscal savings about 100 million in the fiscal container, which you can then use into the, to spend on, it, on capital expansion. So let me give you an example. And recognizing that those numbers are very small, not everybody have perfect eyesight like me, that was supposed to be a joke, okay? Yeah, y'all not wake up, people still sleeping. All right, let me take you to Excel file. Um, imagine, and I assume you can see this. It hasn't switched yet, oh my gosh. One second, I'll share my screen again. Bear with me. You can see now? Yeah, people can see, right? Imagine you were in the Z, Z, um, Z14 scale. So you were earning for it $1,756 annually. That's your basic salary. After NIS and taxes come out, your take home pay is $3,397.09. That is what you will have seen in your paycheck in the commercial bank 
in February. You have seen in March, that's what you got in your account in the credit union, in April, in May, and you won't get it in June. That's your take home, right? We're proposing then that come starting from July, you get the same $3,397.09, but this time you get 97% as cash, meaning you get $3,159.29 as cash into your bank account in, in Broad Street or the credit union, wherever you just get your money sent. At the same time, you get $237.80 as a bond in your bond account at the central bank. So this is Mary Jane. I've been using Mary Jane as a good example. I hope nobody actually needs that I'm um, offended. Tomorrow I'll use somebody else. So Mary Jane gets two statements now. She gets a statement from the Treasury saying your total salary, net take home salary after tax at NIS is $3,397.09. We have paid you $3,159.29 as cash to your bank account 000123 in Broad Street. And then she will get, and, and we have credit your account at the credit at Central Bank with $237.80 as a bond. Central Bank sends you a statement confirming you're, you now have a bond in, 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 in um, account with 2300012, that's an account number and the bonds in there now total $237.80. Mary Jane gets her full salary, just to get it from two different sources. That's July. August now, same thing happened. 3,159 goes to the commercial bank, bond account increases by 237.80. So that means what? That's 500 and... Uh, is that five? No, that's 475.60. September, same thing. Mary Jane has how much bonds in her account? Three bonds. Totaling six somebody, 690 somebody, maybe. I don't do the math. And she, so she's getting her full salary. At the end of 18 months, Mary Jane will got 18 bonds in her bond account at the central bank, totaling 400 and 4,200 and $80.33 in her bond account at the central bank. That's what Mary Jane had. Now, she gets interest on them every six months. And in terms of interest, she getting like $20 the first by January this year, next year, she will got $20. Because she only got six bonds and they're paying at different times. By July, she getting $56. By January 2022, yeah, she got $92. At the end of the four years, she will have $856.07 in her, in terms of interest earned. Now, let's talk about the saving component. If she had put that same for $200 in the credit, in a bank account, in a broad street, anywhere, even credit union, on average, interest rate is 0.15% in a bank account, in broad street, in any bank. Could be less. She will earn twenty-five dollars and sixty-eight cents on that four thousand two hundred and how much dollars and eighty dollars. She will earn twenty-five dollars and sixty-eight cents. But she ain't taking that out because she is paying the bank five dollars a minute fee every month on that account. That's two hundred forty dollars. So she need to cough up some money out of that for two hundred. She saved two hundred forty dollars and pay the bank. So she's paying the bank. And by the way, you are paying the bank, and I am paying the bank to hold my money right now. She has a for $214.32 to pay banks. And by the way, I'm counting, if you use the ATM, that's not your bank ATM, that's a dollar. And if you go in the counter to do a transaction, that's $3. I didn't count them. So you could do the mass. So from a, a savings perspective, for that, this is a no-brainer. No-brainer from a savings. And I could go across and give you examples at different scales. But you get, you get the picture. In fact, some, let me just show you the update. For somebody earning... This is a different Mary now, earning $10,241 in 18 months, you will save $30,000 by just paying down 17% every month. She will earn 30, she will have $30,000 in her bond account. Earning what, earning what, let's see, $6,000 
127.59, as opposed to putting in bank and still having to pay bank 56 a year in the, at that period. So in terms of a savings, it's a no-brainer. But let's talk about, so the only issue we have to talk about is the worker, because worker, first truth, there's no pay cut. The worker getting their full pay. First truth. You're just getting from two different sources, right? But what about the worker? Let's say Mary Jane now needs her money. At any point along this, she needs her cash because Mary Jane, like most of us, have other commitments, other debts. She might have a, a, a car loan that she's paying the credit union for. She might have a loan at courts for some Danette shares, it's called it? Okay. For Danette sets, uh, the initial shares she's still paying for. So Mary Jane said, right now, I can't really save anything, but I'm going to be able to call. I don't pay for the next set shares in the next three months. So I got, I'll pay for the next three months. But right now, I don't want anything. I want up out. I, don't want, I, can't, I can't have it. Give me my money. No problem. No problem. What happens is that Mary Jane says that in July. How, what we do. In July, Mary Jane says, give me my $3,397.09. No problem. She indicates that to the Ministry of Public Servant service who will actually be sending around a survey, a note, a form, asking you this very question. Do you want all your bond as cash, no cash, uh, as cash, or part of it, or whatever? Indicate your interest, what you want. So Major Jane said, I want all cash. Major Public Service said, no problem. They're saying, I instruct the treasurer to pay Major Jane, not the full amount yet, to pay her $3,159.29, that is 97% from the treasury. That goes in Mary Jane's account. But Mary Jane get to the bank account yet because it ain't paid there yet. That can happen before pay there. The Ministry of Public Service also sends instruction to the central bank saying, credit Mary Jane's account with $237.80. And at the same time, sell Mary Jane bond and credit her account in Broad Street with $237.80. So by the time Mary Jane get down in Broad Street and check her account, she have her full $3,397.09. But she, gets, she sees two different sources. She sees a source coming from the Treasury for the 97%, $3,159.29. $3, and she sees a source number two coming from the Central Bank with two thirty seven eighty. She gets her full salary, full salary for that month. And every month until she changes those instructions. She gets a statement from the Treasury saying, this is what your full was three thousand three ninety seven one nine. We pay you three fifty one fifty nine twenty nine, and we credit you a bond of 237.80. Then she get a statement from the central bank saying, we sold your bond and credit you cash. She got all her money back, right? So we, we are flexible. She has her money. But do I or do government achieve its fiscal objective when Mary Jane exercises her golf given right? Do we get our achieve our objective? Yes. That's a clever way the program is designed. Because it doesn't really matter what Mary Jane does or don't do, the program achieves the objective. In other words, there's no bias on the authority or government side to sway Mary Jane one or the other, except to tell her this is a savings instrument. Because we achieve our objective. If you can't achieve it, one might say, well, you want to encourage her or not. We don't know. Purely achieve. How do I achieve my objective? Where did these sources of funds come from, Mary Jane? One source came from the Treasury, right? That's cash. I record only cash in my cash container, remember? I recorded only cash. And the other source came from Central Bank because Mary Jane had a bond. So I issued a bond in Mary Jane's name still, but it was so, so quickly, on the same day, instantaneously, that she never received the bond. She received the cash. But now John Lou, a private sector fella, or Credit Union B, or Commercial Bank C, step up and say, Central Bank, I want that bond quick before it goes anyway. And they take up the bond. So that person now, owns Mary Lou Bond, earning 5%. So I get the fiscal space, because on my container, I only put nine five, I only put $3,159, which is 7% less, so I get the fiscal space to spend. Mary Lou gets her full salary, and another Barbadian institution, credit union or person, is earning an interest, so we're all good, win-win. There's no losses. And, and I mean, let me, let me um, go to the question that everybody asks me. Suppose everybody, in Barbados, say they want the bond, they want cash. I still achieve the objective. So this is being so clearly on the merits of a savings instrument. Because if everybody says they want cash, I issue everybody with cash. And I issue the bond, and somebody else buy the bond. You see? So we still get the savings on the fiscal, but the worker gets his full cash, or 
And I guarantee you the demand of this is so high because credit unions already indicate their interest. Individuals asking, can they buy bonds? Pensioners want off their, their people coming. People with their gratuity want. So the demand will be high. So that scenario don't exist. But I'm trying to tell you, it is fully boss. And the oil is optional. And it's fully optional. Mary Jane can say that in three months, Mary Jane can say, well, I don't pay a court that $110, that $100 to that, then that's set. So I got 100 now. And my co-workers be earning some money. So why do I don't do it? Because I put it in bank, and I don't do anything, and they take $5, that $100 is going to disappear quick. Right? So let me, let me buy someone. So she's changing instructions here. Instead of giving me all cash, my full money, I want to save $100 in bonds. No problem, Mary Lou, Mary Jane. No problem. Ministry of Public Service and instructions to the Treasury. Pay Mary Lou how much? So three thousand one fifty nine twenty nine. And then they send instructions to the Treasury Bank. Credit Mary Lou account with a bond for two thirty seven, and sell one thirty seven. Cause remember Mary Lou only want to save hundred, right? Sell one thirty seven, and so she has now her bond account hundred. And her bank account in credit in credit union in Broad Street or wherever it is, or a bank account, she will see a source of income coming from the treasury for $3,159.29. And she will see money coming from the central bank for one thirty seven eighty, and a statement from the central bank saying, you know, owe $100 in bonds. Your open balance was two thirty seven eighty. We saw one thirty seven eighty, and now you have $100. My little saving. We save it. It makes everybody happy. Six months later, Mary Lou stopped paying for that car. <laughs> at the credit union that she was paying for, and she said, now we can save it 237. In fact, I want to save a piece more. And that is coming daily too. Up to the maximum of what, because we don't remember I'm creating debt, a debt instrument to pay people later. So we still want to remain, we don't want that fourth, that fourth horseman, the apocalypse, raising his ugly head again. So we want to make sure our debt remains sustainable and towards the target of 60% by 2033. So we have a limit, and that's what we evaluate, you know. When people want more than what is allocated to them. Okay, something happened there. When people want more than what is allocated to them, um, can we accommodate it? I think we lost our Zoom folks. Hmm? Yeah, we've lost our Zoom folks, so um, I'm gonna say two other things, then we can take some questions. The other one is that you can see it's fully tradable. I don't know, maybe I'm trying to look. But I don't know, I can see myself here. Maybe the computer, they lost connection. Yeah, I'm still on Zoom. So I think people on Zoom can still hear me because I'm still on Zoom. The only difference is that the computer that connects us over there that you can see who is on Zoom is not working. All right, so let me just continue and finish off and then we can start taking questions. So we have dealt with the issue of, um, and you, can see, you can't see my projection because they're who projecting from me over there, right? So they can't see. But my last slide was really confirming with the liquidity issue. One, so it's fully, trans, it's fully liquid. At the time, you can go ahead and, um, you see, no Wi-Fi. They need to pay the bill. At the time, you can transfer your bond into cash immediately. You can also take your bond and go to the credit union and sell your bond to the credit union. Because what? Credit unions have indicated, if you listen to Brad Stats, you refer from um, the lead head of credit union, Mr. Hain, saying that they will take your bond at par and give you the money and credit your account wherever you want with the money, your loan account, whatever. And the reason is that because it benefits the credit union. This is a good investment opportunity. Right now, credit unions put the money that you put in the, with them into banks, earning 0.15%. Now they have an opportunity to put in a government bond and earn 5%. They benefit because their revenues improve, and you benefit because the credit union members benefit because their share price incre improve, their shares improve, and dividends are paid and members improve. You can sell it to a friend. I could take my bonds and send it to the minister. Minister won't pay me for my bonds, no problem. We agree on price. I have a thousand bonds, she give me a thousand dollars, or maybe she say, depend on the demand. And say, you send it to somebody, let me give you a thousand a dollar for, for, for every thousand, um, a cent for every dollar, 101 cents for a dollar. We can agree on price. We both, I download the form for the central bank, I fill up my information, minister fill up her information, we sign it, the priest notarize it, just in case she have me on the rest. And therefore, not that you would do that, but um, make sure it's a legal transaction. We upload it, the titles are changed, now minister own the bonds, and I'm happy I got my cash. So there are many ways in which this can become um, fully, fully, fully tradable. So now we're back on Zoom, I'm back up there. 
Let me pause now, and then we can take questions. OK, so you have heard. Uh, if you remain entirely silent, that means you have absorbed lot, stock, and barrel, and therefore my job here is finished. Okay. While well, you gather your thoughts, well, um, those on the floor who may wish to pose questions or make a comment, just approach the microphone closest to you. You may want to identify yourself and your organization. Um, optional. Um, so that, that's the choice you have. I am informed that we now have 473 persons with us electronically. Let me also take the opportunity to welcome Minister Santia Bradshaw, who would have joined us uh, after the presentation began. Um, thank you for being with us. Right. Are there any questions? And before you pose your questions, let us take the opportunity to welcome the Prime Minister, who now joins us at her opportune time. Welcome. Right. Yes, ma'am. Herbert, help her. Turn it. Oh, all right. Charlie is coming. Hi, good morning. Um, my name is Leona Dean. I work for Sanitation Service Authority. Um, I just, there was some discussion in the office yesterday um, about, you know, what would happen after four years if there was some sort of restructuring or if there was, people were concerned if another a government came into power or something happened that they wouldn't be able to get their money. Um, I was speaking to one of the engineers and I said that normally government bonds are, are secure, but I think that that was the concern. So I'm wondering if somebody could speak to if there's a major change. They, they, they feel worried that they may not get their money in the four year period. All right. Um, I hope I will have answered that question with my first horseman of the apocalypse. <laughs> On one hand, I mentioned that there are conditions which might force a country to re to go and restructure it there. And those are when these force horsemen start to gather around you. The high deck, horseman number one, and we fixed that, just repeating what he said, because some person may have missed it, was 176% of GDP, including $1.9 billion in arrears, not 118% of GDP, and the arrears has fallen from the 1.9, setting out different ways and paying down to about just above 200. That horseman apocalypse has moved on. It's not here any longer. The other one was reserves. And that reserves were four week, $420 million when you started the BERT program. Um, about four weeks of import cover. I explained what that means. That, that means that if you don't earn any more, you can cover your imports for four weeks. But then we had a, a loan coming in July. I think we call it Swiss loan. And then we had the hurricane season approaching, and we had our payment. So I ain't there. That, that horseman was definitely there. In fact, if we had hit COVID at that point in time, we are now projecting to lose about $700 million in reserves. We couldn't lose $700 million, million from 400. Some are not going to four very well. Now we have $1.7 billion in reserves. And today, sometime now we're probably going to MF board, we're probably there at the moment, being represented by the team there. And once that's successful, our fourth review have been successful, we get 
the 49 million US we get on completion every review when we meet our internal, our internal targets and targets they agree us with. And we get another $19 million to help us with our response to COVID. Every country is taking something to help them. And that will put us about $2 billion. Now, seven do go in $2 billion with a bit of comfort. And so that horseman of the apocalypse is no longer here. We talk about the fiscal horseman of the apocalypse. And given the response to, to, to the 2008 crisis and further fiscal behavior, deficits prior to the program average over a 10-year period or so, 7% of GDP. So that's about $700 million on average, which means $700 million on average in, in debt every year, which means literally seven cents of every dollar being spent on debt service, which means 37 cent, 33 cents remaining to do everything that you want to do, including paying wages and, and um, fixing the roads and capital works program, everything. So much so that with all best intention, anybody, you can't do those things if you don't got money, if your fiscal is like that. In fact, many people probably don't know that coming on to the last end of that period, Central Bank was paying the wages directly, printing $50 million a month because the fiscal is unsustainable. Now, that horseman has moved on. Our fiscal deficit, don't have a deficit, have a surplus. Indeed, we're running primary surplus to pay down debt too. We have loosened that fiscal space, which I tell you we get the 40 foot container from, but that horseman has moved on. And we were dealing with the fourth horseman. We actually stabilized the economy. We started to remove impediments to growth, deal with issues in terms of getting contracts and issues in, 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 in bottlenecks where they occur, and has started the economy to start on a growth path. You have to have those four horsemen colliding on you for you to do that restructuring. I also mentioned that back in 1976, Juan was there when we went to AMF, and he was the, um, the horseman of reserves. He was also present in 1992 when we went to AMF, along with the fiscal horseman, but the debt horseman was never present. The only time he became present was in recent history. So it's unlikely that debt restructuring because fundamentals are intact. But beyond that, from an operational point of view, when we did the last session, saving one billion per month for the next coming years, one billion per year for the next couple of years, we wrote into those contracts that should the government do one of three things. One, miss external debt payment. Two, mystery IMF reviews. Or three, restructure any debt. Again, those savings will have to be returned to the bond holders and debt holders. So that's another event. So the simple answer is Effectively, no. And um, the consequences of it will be devastating. Just Sorry, one other point. You know that we had ring fence the savings bonds on the last occasion. Even as we restructured debt, we ring fence the savings bonds that ordinary Barbadians and Barbadian households had invested in after the last governor and the last minister of finance had used um, that as one of the mechanisms that they were trying to bridge with, and we deliberately did not restructure those. Just before we go, Janice, um, I need to inform you that Reverend Ellis had to leave, she regrets leaving, but had to attend to priestly duties. Good morning, I'm from the Sanitation Service Authority. My question is, how will the arrangements be made for the statutory corporations? You mentioned the Ministry of the Public Service. In the fact that we don't go through the Ministry of the Public Service, how would we be able to participate in the program? Dr. Grinch? Or Prime Minister? In terms of the logistics, because you mentioned that you will get a survey coming from the Ministry of Public Service. The truth is, we are actually now meeting after this, bringing it to you, the public, and explaining what it is. We actually have to meet as a team and go through all the logistics, and Prime Minister is taking charge of that. Because the only area, the area where we don't want to even slip is implementation. So that will come to you soon in terms of exactly how we, the SOE is. But the principle is that the worker will single his intent way before payday of his choice. And that choice will be honored so that by payday, you get your cash or your op preferred option. I don't know if Prime Minister has that. You, you're clear. Janice, I missed part of the question because I was talking to Santia about an urgent matter. So my question was, you mentioned the Ministry of the Public Service and the Treasury. Where are the SOVs? We pay directly. So
So I just want to find out the arrangements. Yeah. There are some SOEs that are definitely in the program, and then there are those like the Bridgetown Port, the Grantley Adams Airport, and Caves of Barbados that are not in the program, but we get the message from the workers who want to be in the program. And therefore, we're going to try to see how we can give them some preferential access, um, both to purchase current public servants' bonds who, for whatever reason, can't take the bonds, and then possibly between that category of SOE worker and some pensioners who have expressed an interest, see how we can give them priority for this particular bond. It means that, and I explained yesterday that we have to do some work with the debt management unit. We had calculated 100 million, um, but the bottom line is, is that we're getting some requests that would cause us to believe that we need to know whether we can move to 120 or 130. I think 150 is too much based on what the debt people had indicated to me before. But because we'd want to make sure that our debt repayments don't bunch either because we intend to repay. So we'll get back to you with the exact amounts for the non-SOEs, um, or let me put it away, for the SOEs who are not dependent on a subvention like the port Caves of Barbados, Grantley Adams. And I was about to say CBC, but CBC is asking still for some level of subvention. Okay? So we'll get back to you on that. But SSA is included, so you'll get your option forms. Are there any questions on Zoom? Good morning. Yes, there are questions on Zoom. Thus far, we have 14 questions. First one, since I, the banks. I was about to say I'll take two now. Thank you. Since the banks, credit unions, insurance companies, etc., stand ready to buy these bonds from public workers who want cash, why not just sell to them to begin with? Second one. Maybe can I say the first one if you're going okay. one at a time, because I may not remember. And it's simple. You remember I mentioned the fiscal space. And what we do, we need to obtain the dual objective of creating fiscal space while maintaining net um, salaries not cut and while maintaining employment. So those are individuals, credit unions, let's say John Lu, John Lou in the private sector, the construction fellow with some extra money. Why don't we just sell him the bond? Because John Lou expenditure to him, he, I don't pay John, the government doesn't pay John Lou wages. So I don't save any fiscal space by paying John Lou directly. There's a, there's a, 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 a um, there, there's opportunity, and will be opportunity for John Lou to contribute in different ways. Currently, he, the private sector, the banks, etc., cetera, con can contribute by standing ready to purchase, and they have indicated that the demand is quite high for these instruments, that any, pub, any instrument that a public sector worker may give up. Also, coming later, as we try to provide more support for NAS and other ways, come will be looking for some sort of instrument. We think it's something called a pandemic solidarity bond. Not necessarily the same terms, but it must fit our debt mature, profile, maybe a long maturity, slightly so different interest rate. But that is where dealing with a finance issue now, with a liquidity issue, John Lou, private sector, and others will buy directly. But for this purpose, the seal will help us with the fiscal space when we sell directly to our public servants. It's the second one. Yeah. Dr. Greenwich was speaking earlier about the maximum limit for the bond. If you got a lot of interest in the bond, what is the maximum bond per month? that will be facilitated. I think the Prime Minister mentioned that in her response to the previous question, where we still are mindful of maintaining our prudence that relate to our debt profile, and we are still committing to that downward trajectory of sustainable debt. And remember, it's 118% GDP now, and we want to converge to international standards of 60% by 2033. Yes, we will take up debt, but it may take up in a, such a way that it maintains that profile. So we are looking at the moment the analysis suggests 25% or something like that. 
But we're going to get back with those limits later. Thank you. Any questions from the floor? There are several microphones about, so feel free. Yes, sir. Um, just a moment. All you who are seated um, and may wish to ask questions, just make your way to the, any available microphone and I'll recognize you from here. Go ahead, sir. Good morning, National Sports Council. Uh, my question is kind of opposite the one that was just asked. I was asking if there is a minimum. I see you had up the chart that indicated the percentage for different pay scales, but what if, although I've fallen in particular pay scale, I would like to be a part, but I cannot meet that required amount. Is there flexibility for me to say take less? And if there is, what would be the minimum amount that would be allowed? Yes, it's fully optional. You can indicate you want all the bonds that are located. You say it was 12 percent, or you want 10, 9, 8. You could say want zero, meaning I want all my money in cash. It's fully flexible in that regard. Yes. Thank you. And you could change it. You, you could say I want it that for the next five months, six months, or maybe I want to, and then there you can come back and increase it. So it's fully flexible in that regard. Anybody else from the floor? In that case, I would take another two from the Zoom. Dr. Greenwich, you didn't speak about the person-to-person -person transfer facility. Is that coming up later in the presentation? I mentioned that by at that point, it's when Zoom went down. Um, so uh, uh, the bonds are fully tradable, and that's one way you can trade your bond. I mentioned the instance of um, me selling, selling my bond. Let's say I had a bond, a thousand dollar bond. I want to sell it to the minister. We agree between us that she will buy my thousand dollar bond at par. But some bonds may say a little less, a little more, a little less, depending on how much more time it remains for that bond to mature. Now, many ministers agree that we would, she would buy my, bond, my thousand dollar bond for a thousand dollars, maybe a year have passed. It has three years remaining and she can earn interest on it. We, we download the transfer title form from the central bank. We both fill in the details required, like name, et cetera, ID. And then we get someone to notarize it, like a priest, a notary public to notarize it, just to make sure that neither of us is being swayed one or the other way is a, is a legitimate transaction. And then we upload it to the Central Bank website. And then the bond changes from my title, Kevin Greenish, to the minister's name. Now she has a bond, a thousand. I will continue to earn the interest for the next three years because I've already had a year of interest benefit from it. And so it's fully transferable that way. And just to make sure, in case you missed that too, you could, I could also have taken my bond to the credit union and say, I have a bond, I have a loan with you, or maybe I don't, I just need the money. The credit union is starting ready to purchase that bond. Whether, again, the only thing we can guarantee you from, our, from the scheme perspective is that the day of your salary, when you take your bond, if you want it in cash, you will get it dollar for dollar. So in the example I showed, a person getting $237 in bond and say, want the cash now, that was Mary Jean, the central bank converts it immediately and give her the cash, 237 But if a month later or two months later, Mary Jean, wants to sell that bond person to person, peer to peer, or to a financial institution, or even that's essentially right to sell it, you may not necessarily get dollar for dollar. Maybe if the demand is high enough and people are looking for bonds, you might get a little more. Some person might be able to want to pay you 102 cents for the dollar, 105 cents for the dollar. Or if it comes at a time where the market is swamped because something else came out, and people are not so interested, you may have to pay 98 cents on the dollar. So that part is different, but they're fully tradable um, uh, in terms of the structure. Will you have to opt out every month if you do not wish to purchase bonds? And will there be any priority given to who purchases bonds that persons have opted out of? For example, private individuals before commercial entities. 
So you can indicate, a worker can indicate at the beginning a particular instruction. In this case, I don't want any bonds, I want only cash. And that instruction could remain until the worker change it. Next two or three months, worker will say, well, maybe they know that by November they're interested, so you say between now and November I want all cash, no bonds. And so at any point in time you can change your instructions without penalty, but there will be a time coming out. You will have to do it early enough, but instructions and information will be coming out as we were through those logistics about the cutoff, whether it be the 50 month or the 10 50 month, but in advance a pay there. And the second question is, um, sorry. Will there be any priority? Oh yes, yes, so that came out in the other meetings that we had, and beyond the fact that only public sector workers can get bonds from government, in this case directly, um, we'll be working with Central Bank to see how, because the demand by the financial institutions, corporation, corporate Barbados, and private uh, individuals are so high, that we want to find a way whereby um, the hierarchy of distribution in bonds should be such that a public sector worker get preference to have bonds coming out on the secondary market, followed by private individuals, and then going down to like that. We haven't worked out how that will do yet, but the central bank and the team is looking at that sort of preference behavior. I notice that there is a distinct bias in the crowd. All the questions are coming from my left. Are there any questions from the right? They all look at each other. Okay, well, since there's that, I see you, sir. Good morning. Um, my name is Basil Small from the SJFPI. Um, in chatting with one of my colleagues, one of the questions that they were asking as if bonds will be produced for them to, if the bonds are being produced for every officer who is on the list in terms of, of, of the bonds being sold. Of every officer that is being paid by government. Yes. Central government. Bonds will, will be produced. Is every public sector officer, yes. Okay. Um, I, had, I had some other questions which Dr. Greenidrich you answered actually um, because I had asked my um, union president, Mr. McDowell, to, to um, ask about the, how the interests work out in terms of the bond payments and as well, um, but you made mention today that the, the interest is paid on a six month basis. It's very simple, actually, correct. it's called simple interest. Pardon? It's very simple, in fact, right. it's simple called simple interest. interest. On a six month uh, period. So, it's, let's say a thousand dollar example. Yeah. Five percent is fifty dollars annually. Mm -hmm. So, in six months, you get half of that. That's right. And um, every six months, you get a half, 25, 25. Simple interest. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I will say today that from the last presentation, um, it's a little more, even more informative. Um, and I agreed in terms of the physical space that, because when I look at it, it's almost like government born from government. That's the way I see it. And you know, that's a good point you're making. It's actually borrowing funds from its workers, giving the opportunity to invest. And that's why the interest rate is so, is really good. Last, time, last loan we got, we borrowed from CDB was at 4.5%. The last restructuring debt that we did in December those months was 6.25%. So the 5%, it was kind of like what we would normally borrow from my uh, corporations and those paying them. So instead of paying them for the debt, we achieve our objective and we pay the workers an opportunity to invest. I should mention, because you, your question led me to another point that I did make in that this also helps us to build a secondary bond market. We are now, because there's so many strips, each worker will got 18 strips, and he or she can trade any piece at any time, depending on their circumstances. After five months, something happened. You have accumulated five pieces of bonds, totaling you said 10,000, and you need 5,000 for medical issue. You can sell your bonds, and, um, 
and trade them in and, and, and get your money and do what you need. Or and other persons buying them. So now we are starting to develop this bond market for secondary. It's secondary because when I say secondary, government doesn't, it's not a primary issue. And um, I think this goes a long way where now Pearson start to, because traditionally we have a, although I think people do it, buy and hold you, the, the end of the period, people will do it because the interest rate is so attractive, but they start to develop that bond market. The other thing you know, remind me that I should say is that we also be looking to do financial literacy clinics throughout the island. And so persons start to get familiar to what is a bond? How do I trade? How can I benefit? Uh, how can I, what, what, those sort of things, are understanding how to make your money work for you. Right now your money, commercial money is not working for you, you're working for your money because that you are paying the banks to hold your money. But you hear the old things, yet your money works for you. By buying bonds and instruments and investing in paper, your money works for you. And how do you make an informed choice about that? And those are things that we have, we will start doing some small financial clinics to get persons all fair with. So you're just reminding me a very good point. Yes, Thank and, you. and as I was saying to you earlier too, in terms of our fiscal space, and I, I believe as, I don't know, maybe I kind of stranger or something, but I believe that as Barbadians, we need to realize that we need to have a lot more physical space than even what is being asked for now. Because when they look at trends and, and what is happening around the world and the competition that will come to us, where we will have to combat those things, we're going to need even a greater physical space because we're going to have to have coal hard cash to work with as time come and go. And, and it's not because of COVID-19, but it's what, if you look at market trends, you look at what is happening around the world, we are going to come on the gun at some point in time. Thank you. But mention that point, I mean, it's a good point. I would just add to it is, is that um, we do get these unforeseen events, and that's why it's important to keep the fiscal house in order. That is why when we restructure the debt, we built a clause in there for, well, um, a dis natural disaster clause, which allow us to save on, to forego paying debt service if we have a natural disaster for like two, two to three years. Yeah. If we have and a tropical storm like Kirk, remember the Kirk two Septembers ago? That is what will trigger our suspension of debt payments under our natural disaster clause. So as rough as it is, and we pray that there is no loss of life or no loss of serious property if we get it, but the truth is if we get it, we can immediately suspend $1.7 billion in the next two years um, by one, putting a moratorium on principle, and two, capitalizing the interest to the back end. But what it does is that it allows us then to focus that money on fixing the things that need to be fixed as a result of the intervening climate event. Um, if I have one regret, and I keep saying it, is that we didn't think of pandemic uh, as, as well. Um, and we have it in there for natural disaster, but it is what it is. Nobody predicted a pandemic at all across the world other than um, at the very highest level in the developed world, their scientists have always kept an eye on it until um, recent times when one or two of them dropped it. But for the most part, they've kept an eye on the risk. Just one short question again. Um, so at the end of four years, you get back your money and you have some interest. Suppose you wanted to do another bond or you want to reinvest the interest that you receive, would, is that something that you can do or you just have to take all your money at, at four years? So at, at the end of each month, you, each six months, you will get interest into your bank account. Yesterday we had a similar question and where um, the unions um, representatives were, were, were encouraged to perhaps come up with an instrument that you can invest your interest in. But that's part of your finan financial literacy training that we would do and part of your becoming more financially aware in that you have to keep your eyes out for opportunities. I don't know in four years time what will be the needs at that time and perhaps another bond will come for you to invest. But you need to be watchful of these things. I also encourage the credit union and your, your, and the, and your unions in general 
to find maybe instruments that you can invest in this interest. But by default, they come to you, it's your interest earned. Now you have to see what to do with it. Don't forget, the safest piece of investment is a piece of land too. So. Whilst some person else makes themselves, makes their way to the mic, I'll take another two questions from Zoom. Thank you. At what time will public officers be given the prospectus in black and white of this bond? And can you buy bonds beyond the 18 months or will it end at that point? The program is an 18-month program, um, and, and therefore, uh, at 18 months, you stop contributing in terms of having bonds, then you, and you continue to hold the bonds onto maturity, which is four years from the day in which the bond is issued. Um, on the first question, there's no need for a prospectus. Um, government is just compensating you in terms of a bond, and we're giving you details of what the bond will be. At the same time, I believe in, uh, well, government will be taking a paper to the cabinet in advance of all doubt to detail and explain what is involved and what is being offered, and those documents are public documents. Legislation is coming, so you don't have to worry about that. That's going to be in black and white. And then beyond the legislation, the Ministry of Public Service will send out what they need to send out to every individual. So you'll see that clearly. Um, but without having to wait for either of those two things, there is a document that is circulating now that describes in writing what is available and how things are going to work. If you don't have a copy of it, you should be able to find it on um, the internet and social media. And I think, Ms. Gilmore, GIS website too? Yes, on GIS website. Thank you. Any other questions from the floor? We still have some in Zoom. Another two. Being very aware of the reality of the bureaucracy that exists, has the rollout of this program been tested in any way to ensure that the proposed July ro rollout will be smooth and seamless. That is what we're going through now. Um, but as you know, there have been issues in the past with the central bank, and therefore, um, with with one or two of the bonds in the past, um, I think it was the Clico one, and therefore, to ensure that this is seamless. We are literally meeting with all of the parties and taking nothing for granted. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And can a guarantee be given that at the end of the period, should any unfortunate events arise, will the bonds be redeemed for the stated value? So can guarantees be given that- Unforeseen circumstances, you said? Unforeseen. I think I, I've answered this question Unforeseen. in many ways. Let, um, let, let her repeat it again, because I thought I heard, but I'm not sure. Can a guarantee be given that at the end of the period, should any unfortunate events arise, will the bonds be redeemed for the stated value? That's what we've said all along. And we've said that in the same way that we took care of the savings bonds, we're doing it with this, okay? And that's why we're not, op as much as there's tremendous demand it is appearing, we are still going to cap it at a certain amount because whatever happens, we must be able to repay. So you don't just borrow because you can borrow, but we must be able to repay, okay? The invitation is still there for those persons on the floor. You've come here, you've heard firsthand, up front and center. The opportunity is yours to pose these questions, to make your comments, to express any concerns that you may have now that the Prime Minister and Dr. Greenwich are, are here. If you don't take up my invitation, 
I will invite Zoom to go again. Actually, we've answered all the questions. We had some repetitions, but we've answered all. Okay. Thank you. I just want to thank all of you who have taken the time to come here, but also all of you who are on Zoom. I apologize for my late arrival, but um, this morning I had a Heads of Government Summit with the African, Caribbean, and Pacific countries, and then I had an urgent meeting with the economic team and the governor of the central bank when I arrived here. But I felt that it is important for me to be in all of these sessions to be able to face you directly and to speak to you in a way that causes you to understand where the government is going and why this is a win-win for you, for the government, for the savings of the country and those entities, um, institutions and individuals who want to save. And ultimately, as I said yesterday, to close the circle of enfranchisement because our people have the right to vote, have the right to go into unions, have the right to participate in social security, have the right to do all of these things. But what we have to do is to make sure that Barbadians are not tenants in their own country. Now that's not gonna change just so. It takes time. And the process started, the credit union movement that we see today and that we're so happy has assets of about two and a half billion dollars. 30, 40 years ago, it was a couple hundred million. And Tom Adams was able to put measures in place to encourage Barbadians by giving them tax incentives to be able to save in the credit union. And then those who didn't join because of tax incentives realized that this was a far friendlier environment to do my banking and my savings and my borrowing than a traditional bank on Broad Street. So that, that was the first step. The ability to allow people to buy their land at 10 cents a square foot is another form of enfranchisement. And then thereafter, when Owen Arthur offered urban lands at $2.50 a square foot with government subsidizing the difference was another form of enfranchisement. Economic enfranchisement will come not only through the ownership of land, which doesn't spoil, but also through the ownership of financial instruments that allow you the flexibility to make your money work for you while you are not using it, and at the same time to ensure that you are in a position to save for either business or other things. This program, however, has benefited from the deep consultations with the unions to ensure maximum flexibility for you, the individual. And that is because you can treat it as a blank canvas. And as Dr. Greenwich has said, you have the ultimate decision as to whether you opt in or opt out. Whether you opt in fully or opt in partially. Whether you opt out fully or opt out partially. Now, all of that is a lot of language just to say that you could decide that you want it for all 18 or none of the 18. For three, four, five, six, eight, ten, whatever amount. And if your circumstances change, as I'm aware, for example, there was somebody who last week was very sweet on it, very gung-ho, and then they discovered something, um, an illness in the family over the weekend. And they've said, look, I can't come in for the full amount that I wanted to come in for, which for them, I think they were in the 12% yeah. ban. But can I come in for part of it? And we said, of course. So if before you come in, in at the 12% ban and you were, they were taking X amount from you when the month come and you can now only afford half of that, you can write and say, this is what I will do, and this is what I want you to give me in bonds, and this is what I want you to give me in cash. So it is truly flexible to allow you to design as is your need according to your circumstances, not just now, but as your circumstances change going forward. And at the end of the day, what does it allow you to do? It allows you to be your brother's sister and your brother's keeper. 
Barbados has 41,000 applications for unemployment benefit. Not people, so the people may be a little less. But what we do know is that our unemployment rate has gone from 9.5% and it's probably closer now to 30%. We don't have the exact figures yet. We're trying to get them, but based on the movement of the unemployment benefits, that's what it's looking like. Now, to have three out of every 10 people not working on 166 square miles of working age, that's too high. That's unacceptable. And after this, we'll be looking to see what else we can do within the context of both shifting some of that money that you're going to help us shift from recurring expenditure, your salary, to capital expenditure. And in doing the capital expenditure, what are we going to be doing? Fixing buildings fixing schools, can't even fix all still, but we can start fixing a lot more than we're fixing. Roads, water. I just saw a story with St. Vincent rationing water, and it just reinforces the point I made this morning to the other leaders of the world and to the Secretary General of the UN, that the climate crisis is not just about hurricanes for us, but it is about drought and it is about sargassum weed. The digitization of documents, we go into ministries and all of this paper pile up, pile up, pile up, and all it's doing is doing what? Causing people to can't breathe properly. And the sinus is because the paper does what? Gather dust. Put my office here. I got two of them in case the battery dead. That's my office. Push come to shove, this too. I don't know the last time I've signed a paper document. I heard the AG talking about it yesterday too. And it is because not only cabinet is paperless, but I literally refuse to take paper files for most of these things. So my correspondence, my files, everything. We want to get the entire government to that stage where yes, you can still use paper for some things, but for the majority of transactions and definitely for the records that are critical, because we've got to go back in the records to check personnel, check policy, to check all kinds of things, that we start to scan them and have them available. And that's work that a lot of people, instead of doing it over four or five years as we have under the IDB project of 40 million US, let's condense it and do as much of it in the next 18 to 24 months. And then, of course, training. Why? Because if you have time and you're not in full throttle, when best for you to amplify your skills and to make yourself better and stronger and fitter? And that's what you do anytime. I know, I just had an operation. I know that I gotta get myself fit again. It's no different when you have an intervening event that causes you not to perform at optimal levels, then we all need to go back to basics and see how we can strengthen our skills, strengthen our knowledge, sharpen everything, and go forward. Now, I've taken the time to explain that because you must be in no doubt as to how we are seeking to amplify. And that's just the fiscal, in other words, the things that government will spend money on. But government also has other powers, and we will be working to use facilitation or empowerment or town planning or different things to allow for others who have economic activity to generate in the country that ability. At the end of the day, what is it that I'm asking from us? That even in the midst of this COVID crisis, and C seems to be a popular letter, that we need to be confident. We need to be sure that we are doing what we can do in the best way that we can do it, and not doubt ourselves. That's why in all of those messages during the height of the pandemic, what did I do? But quote the national anthem, okay? We have no doubts nor fears. The Lord has been the people's guide. With him at our side, we have what? No doubts nor fears. Secondly, we need people to be committed. And that's what we're asking you to help us do. We're committing to this country we're committing to stability, we're committing to quality of life, we're committing to our brothers and sisters being able to put food on their table 
because everybody in this country must eat during this next 12 to 18 months as we manage the COVID environment and as we have been trying to do in the last two to three months. We want people to be creative. We have gotten an instrument that works for everybody and this is the best of Beijing creativity and ingenuity working government and the labor unions working together to meet the needs because what we did was to deconstruct. Yes, government needs to move money from one side of the, of, of the accounts to another side in order to be able to create the activity that will allow more Bajans to work. At the same time, we need an instrument that gives you the flexibility that does not leave you out of pocket if you need all of your liquidity. And if you don't need all of your liquidity, it gives you the opportunity to get better interest rates than anybody else in the country giving you. And with a relative sense of ease without you having to worry about whether the things will come in or not, as we said just now. And finally, we need people to be compassionate, to care enough about each other. And that's why, for me, the most important rule in this country, the most important thing in this country, I don't care how bright people are, I would like them to be, but if they're not bright, I want at least to know that they are comfortable and confident in themselves, that they care about people and compassionate, that they're creative, and that they're committed to both family, church, or mosque, or ja, or whoever you believe in, even if it is a different set of things, that you are creative, that you don't believe that you can only think inside of a box. Sometimes you've got to think outside of a box. And that finally, that you are um, caring enough about the people around you. So I hope that this will not just be a COVID exercise, but it will be an exercise that will advance us in the process of nation building. Um, Minister Sutherland will soon be establishing the financial literacy clinics because it's not just for this, but how many people have asked, what else can I invest in after, or what else can I do? And we must have Bajans in Spike Stone, Bajans in Belle Plaine, Bajans in Six Roads, Bajans in the Glebe St. George, in Oystins, in town, being able to, huh? Bajans in the pine. <laughs> I'm stuck here between two pine people in the pine. Three, the street, four. The, 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 I think we're being overtaken yes. by the pine on this platform. Um, but the bottom line is, is that we must have people who are capable of understanding or telling their children to understand. How many people in here in true? And uh, uh, don't, don't tell them things. How many people in here at some point in their life had to say, well, I know how I can make it next month? <laughs> as a young person, and it's only when I understand a couple of things, I don't open bills at night, can't sleep good. <laughs> Take that foolish advice, don't open the bills at night. Open bills in the morning, when you've got the whole day ahead of you, you've got energy and pepper instead. But separate from that, there are times when you say, I'm looking at my outlay. I supposed to be earning three thousand dollars, but I spend eighteen hundred dollars a month, and I ain't even pay rent or mortgage. So you have to go back, and we have to show people that don't give yourself a heart attack, don't give yourself high blood pressure. Let us see how we can restructure what you're doing to start to make it work for you. And it's these kinds of financial literacy clinics and the little memes. Instead of only, I, I love to laugh. But don't only send me memes to laugh. Don't only send me spiritual memes. Send me some financial literacy memes. So that is what we're trying to do. Because with every bit of knowledge that a person picks up, they add to it, they add to it, they add to it. So I hope that this is a turning point for us. I wanted to intervene to speak to you to let you know that I apologize for coming in late. But I know that you're in good hands with everybody at the head table here. But believe you me, we are in this together. And I trust and pray that we recognize hearing other heads of government this morning, I know that as rough as things are for Barbados, 
we are still better than the majority who really are facing. In East Africa, in addition to the flooding, in addition to the increasing numbers um, dying, they got locusts eating all the crops. Now, you ask yourself at that point, who really this is about? Okay, so I want us to give thanks, not to drop the ball, stay focused, and let us, let us keep our heads above water. Today is June 3rd, 2020. Let us make sure that on June 3rd, 2021, as many Bajans have their head above water as possible. Nobody ain't asking you for breaststroke, Nobody ain't asking you for freestyle. Nobody ain't asking you for backstroke. A good dog paddle and a treading of water is what we need because it's still keeping the lungs and the heart and the blood and everything going. So thank you very much. It seems, Madam PM, that your interjection has energized the Zoom platform because there are now another 12 questions and counting. But I'm going to recognize the gentleman standing by the mic, and then I'll be back to you, Zoom. All right, good morning, Prime Minister, members of the head table, Mr. Greenwich. Um, you did indicate, well, that we all have to share in this burden in the Prime Minister saying just now. Um, we also have to create physical space to enter into this program. And what I really, really want to find out is, in terms of speaking maybe to the private sector, are they also going to be um, gracious in terms of um, allowing us, for example, say you have a mortgage or whatever, okay? To enter this program, you have to exercise some degree of physical space. Okay, in your, in your internal budgets. So are they gonna be considerate in terms of maybe refinancing mortgages for extended periods of times, even for some of the uh, businesses? Are they gonna look at um, refinancing loans and things like that um, for persons who may be inter inter interested in entering into this program? Let, let me say to you that on the 20th of March, when I spoke to Parliament, I indicated that the banks were prepared to work with people on their mortgages and on loans um, for three months with the potential to exp expand for another three months. And that started. I've actually not had a report from the banks yet. I've had a report from the credit unions. And they are working with people as far as possible. Having said that, I would not expect anybody um, to do the impossible. And, and this is literally why we agreed with the unions that in those instances where an individual does not have liquidity, that we have structured this bond to allow you to be able to sell it so that you don't find yourself in penury or you don't find yourself lick up because you literally can't do what you need to do while getting the bond. So I hope that that answers you. The, the, the banks and the credit unions um, are conscious that, like everyone else in the world, our people are under stress because in our particular case, tourism has stopped. The Caribbean is one of the most travel and trade dependent regions in the world. And in addition to tourism stopping with zero revenue for two months, we don't know, we don't have a date when we're starting back, and I've said we're not moving to a date, we're moving to safe protocols. But secondly, in addition to that, we have a situation where our, um, our people have now to recognize that it is not going to be business as usual because trade is also affected you would notice that the oil prices are also significantly down from what they were. And then that is disrupting those economies that are dependent on heavy commodities and trade and um, commodities. So most trade, as I said this morning, is in intermediate goods. In other words, not finished product, it's a raw material or something that you need to be able to you need the labels to finish this bottle properly. You need the cap, which may be made by a different manufacturer and a different country. And if you don't get all of these things coming together at the same time, 
I can't finish the product, put it in a case, and send it out. And it's that disruption of supply that's also causing us serious problems. So against that background, the banks and credit unions have generally been sympathetic. And if you're having problems, I would suggest that you go in and talk with them. But equally, if you're having problems and you don't have the liquidity, don't sweat. Don't sweat. We're in this together. And we will make sure that next time wrong or when you have the liquidity that you're in a position to do it. Okay? Zoom. I am paid by monthly. How are the sale of bonds, or how will the sale of the bonds be facilitated for by monthly paid persons who meet the boss criteria? Thank you. I think that most public workers are actually paid monthly. And so. By monthly, we have a category. By monthly. Are paid by monthly. Every two months. Every two twice weeks. Twice, 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 twice a month. Oh, twice a month. <laughs> Every, two weeks. Every two weeks, all right. Still having my coffee. Yeah, well, those things we are still working out, but in principle, the, you're, you're, every two months you're, you're paid, you will still get part, every two weeks you will still get part in cash and part as a bond. So it doesn't really matter how you're paid. When you get your pay, it will still be split, part cash, part bond. Thank you. So it will make a difference to you. And we have somebody who wants to understand. Um, they're asking if you can explain how government will earn the money to pay bondholders at the end of the four-year period. You would have spoken of investing in capital works projects, but how does that earn money? Can you please break it down? You remember, think of it this way. When government spends $100 million in capital projects, who are, who are doing the work? Government is really giving money to contractors and workers and people out there who is going to take that $100 million, literally going in the going economy. So the simple example, the contractor hires 50 people and pay them $100 each. So each of the persons has $50, $100. They go and buy groceries. They go and do this. The economy is growing because activity is taking place. And taxes are earned and increased as the economy, not because it increases any tax rate, but because the base the economy is growing. So in a nutshell, we are getting economic growth. When government gets economic growth, when the economy is growing and government gets an increase in tax intake, it revenues improve, is in a better position financially to meet the commitments. That's why investing in capital works as opposed to current expenditures not only have the effect that capital works have a finite commitment, a project begins and ends, but at the same time it has what we call the economics a multiply effect. Somebody get the money, and they pay other people to do things, they buy food, they buy this, they do that. And that multiplying effect through the economy causes the economy to grow, which causes you to get an increase in tax revenues, which can do better, more work. So it, it benefits, that's how it works. Zoom me again. One more. If the bonds are oversubscribed by the public officers, do you then reduce the percentage you are requesting from them to save in bonds? For example, would you move from 12% to 10% instead? So right now, those percentages which we would have displayed are calculated or calibrated to give us 100 million. Then the question becomes, because demand has been so high, can we accommodate, in reality, not moving down, but increasing the percentage persons want? That is where now we are doing the analysis to see what is the upper limit. Do we allow everybody to get an extra three, four percentage point? But the rates now, all things be equal, are calculated to give us 100 million. Um, perhaps I can call on the Director General for the question, two questions back to clarify the position. Ms. Atkins. Microphone.
Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Prime Minister. Um, in relation to the question um, which asks about by monthly workers, persons um, earning the, the $36,000 would be in positions such as section leader. All other by monthly workers would not f fit into the category of $36,000 and above. So, therefore, the position. They would have to want to job. opt in. They would have to opt in, yes. Right. So, that person's earning under um, over $36,000, none of them are paid every two weeks, correct? Thank you. Zoom. Will there be an independent evaluation of this prospectus? I think you, the public sector worker, is the um, evaluation. This is why we are presenting to answer all your questions so you can do a thorough independent analysis of what's being presented to you. Um, we have discussed it also with the social partnership at all levels, at every integral part of the, of the proposal. And for me, I don't think there's a bigger, a more robust evaluation they, they put us, and together we came on a tremendous. It really stretched our ingenuity and caused us to think truly, particularly in the making it truly optional. So I think um, it's been vetted at all kinds of levels, and this perhaps forum is one of the greatest levels too. I thank the president of the BUT wants to make a contribution on this BOSS program. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, all. Um, we would have held our meeting with members of the education set on Monday, and there were a number of concerns which would have arisen. Um, primary among them, and with respect to the medium term, should this program not realize the outcomes that are desired? Persons are wondering if the government is more inclined to return to diverting revenue in terms of the salaries of employees or seeking to look at increased taxation? That's one of the questions that had arisen. I'm really not sure what you're asking, so let's break it down. Move, Edwin. Let's talk. One, we are looking at this program currently, and it is looking to issue bonds over 80 months. That would end in December of 2021. Persons were concerned that if the program does not realize the benefits, we're looking to see where we get that fiscal space between 100 to 110 million dollars, that the government may be pressed into looking at another avenue to create that budgetary space, so to speak. Well, we'll have to find the space somehow or the other. This is the pro probably the least painful way of finding it. And the way how it has been designed and given the excitement that has been expressed by the credit union movement um, pensioners, other public servants who are not originally included in the program, um, the chances are we are going, well not chances are, we will achieve it because the central bank effectively is the intermediary, but we're satisfied that there are enough people who want to buy from it. So the assumption of it is one that we would not agree with because we feel we will achieve it, but secondly, if you were, in whatever reason, correct, we would have to find some other way to make the adjustment. And this is, in fact, one of the least painful ways to do it while meeting the national objective of increasing savings and capital formation. Hey, Minister, if we could just Please. add to what you said. Remember, in the presentation, I gave an example, that an extreme example, that if every public worker, Sean, <clears throat> has said you don't want but it's so well designed that all that happens, as the Prime Minister points out, Central Bank takes out that space and sells it immediately. So the benefit of saving the crew to other Barbadians and institutions, and government still gets the fiscal space. So we, by default, the program is, such, is so well designed that we will get the fiscal space. The only part of this that we have to make sure is seamlessly is the implementation. So I just want to their fear is that it is designed to achieve the objective and give the worker the maximum option. So that irrespective of what the worker does, all the worker really doing in any day would then be saying that I can't save now. Let somebody else save in my place. 
let someone else hold these bonds in my place. That's what our work is doing. But someone will hold bonds, and the fiscal space will be achieved. All right? So just want to make that pretty very much clear. With that, uh, I invite Zoom. For the resale of bonds in months after it has been issued, it was said it will be at a discount rate. Is the discount rate fixed or does it change? And yeah. if it does change, how is this calculated? Right, so, so for clarity, on the day you receive your bond as part of your salary, that is that part if you want to convert it, meaning if you get $100 in bonds, I'll okay to you because that's your percentage, but you decide I will need the cash now, then you get your $100 in cash. There's no exact par. You can only say par, 100 for 100, dollar for 100 cents, yeah? After that, the market forces must be allowed to play if you're going to develop the capital, the um, secondary bond market. It, de it depends on the demand and supply. On one hand, let's say a lot of persons, credit unions, individuals, um, interested in bonds are willing to take up what public servants have given up. Then, a month or two later, you maybe take that same thousand dollar bond and dollar for dollar might get a dollar and two cents, a hundred and two cents. So it means that you get a thousand and two dollars for the same thousand because the demand is high. Your neighbor might say, I can give you one or two per dollar. And then another fellow down the road said, no, listen, I really like the savings. I got the extra money I got nothing to do, so I can give you one or three. And that would be dependent by market. Conversely, the opposite may happen, where it may be at a time where there are some other bonds, say pandemic bonds floating about, people, things happening, and you may be, or maybe you have used most of the year, maybe each bond is a four-year bond. Maybe you've had this bond for three years, and now being put it back on the market, where there's only one year remaining in interest. And so you may have to say, somebody may say, well, partner, you give you 95 cents on the dollar because there's only one year remaining. And depending on your circumstances, you may take it. So we must allow the market to truly plow the rate on the bond, secondary bond market. But the commitment is because this is part of your salary. On the, if you ask for it in cash, when it's given to you, it is at par. I will also say that even shortly thereafter, the credit unions have indicated because the savings interest rate is so good that they are willing to look at that at the same time at par. I am a teacher. If I have a lump sum that I want to invest in bonds, say $500, is there a facility for that? Who would I contact? I take it that I may have to go through the Ministry of Education to adjust my bond rate. Is that correct? So you can, this, you, as a teacher, then whatever category you name, you will get the amount allocated to you. And if, and I indicated that we may be able to consider as a bit more, learning persons go beyond the percentage depending on what impact, on our, how it's impacting our debt, and we're still doing that analysis. But let's assume, for example, you can only take 12% or 7%, and you still got 500 remaining on 300. Then you look around to see if any of your colleagues want to give up their bond. Failing that, you can also register on the Central Bank website or call the Central Bank and see what has become available and let it be known that if any bonds come up for sale, I'm willing to purchase up to 500. All the individuals, we are encouraged to do that. But Central Bank is working on a well, portal where you can sign in, anyone and say, and declare or indicate what they're willing to take up. So in, in a nutshell, you can buy it for another public worker who is willing to give up theirs, or you buy it on the secondary market through the Central Bank um, by pledging how much you're interested in buying. Any other persons on the floor? Zoom? At the end of the four years, is there a guarantee that I would get back the principal saved in bonds? And Prime Minister, this sounds too good to be true. Am I to believe that someone will definitely buy my bonds if I need it? 
that's the basis upon which it is premised. So I'm not sure, yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. And if it is too good to be true, I don't think that it is too good to be true. I think that it is the best of our creativity. And when I tell people about deconstructing and reconstructing, this is a perfect example of it. Because when we deconstruct, we ask, what is the public purpose we're trying to serve? We know it now, to give government fiscal space and to ensure that the employee still receives what they need to receive and be given the option to save if they can or to be liquid if they need to. What is the public mischief? The public mischief is that people try to abuse the system or it is not executed seamlessly. What is it that technology allows us to do that we could not do without it? Technology allows us to batch this and to process multiple different desires easier. If we had to do this all by hand, it would probably not be possible years ago because you're talking about 20,000, over 20,000 people potentially. Well, actually not because we, the thir people under 36,000, so probably about half, probably about 13, 14,000. Secondly, um, are we disadvantaging or trying to protect a group of people Yes, we are. The people under 36,000 are not being given the option because we're trying to create a housing market and those public servants who need houses and who therefore will need to be able to have the liquidity for a massive housing program that we're going to launch, we're making sure that they play their part, not by purchase of bonds, but by those of them who want to become homeowners being able to become homeowners. Having said that, those under 36,000 who already have a home, uh, who may have liquidity, can opt in by talking to the head of department even though the forms will not come to them um, in the first going now. So for them, they have to say, yes, I want a piece of this, of this too, okay? But we expect them to be the ones who will also be the core of becoming homeowners in this country going forward um, particularly given the fact that the price of land has been out of the reach of a number of them who do not live on tenantries or inherit land from tenantries or housing units from national housing. I hope I've explained to you that I don't see it in terms of good or bad, I see it in terms of what is effective and how we deconstruct and reconstruct public policy. Brother Basil. Question here. Um, from observation uh, in terms of the bonds, if I, as David said, if you purchase bonds in 2020, and they, they, these bonds will mature in 24. And then for the 18 months, you want to realize that in 21, you will purchase bonds that will mature in 25. But I don't, I don't look at moving my bonds until 25. So the bonds that I have from 20 matures in 24, and you're, you're paid interest in the, in the six-month period. Those bonds, if I kept those bonds until 25, would, would I be paid interest on those in 25? You wouldn't have the option of keeping them, boss. Pardon? You would not have the option of keeping a bond that's matured Okay. Once a bond is mature, you will see the next day the money in your bank account. Buy a new one. You can use that money to buy a new one or a different bond. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Which part of the financial literacy programs that we bring, how do you make your money continue to work for you? Right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. We still have questions from Zoom. Just one more. Uh, I'm not sure if we addressed it already, but how do we assess, how do we access the bond account to keep track of the amount in that account? Are digital or physical statements issued? You will get every month an electronic statement from the central bank showing you opening balance for that month, 
what has been added to it, what has been sold, and your final balance. That will be sent to you electronically every month. But any time in between, you can also contact the Central Bank to issue instructions or find out something about your balance or anything like that. Well, it seems as though we've exhausted all the questions that could possibly arise from you who, from you who participated this morning with the exception of Brother Vien. Yeah. yeah, good morning. This is for clarity. It was said that the $3,000 a month related to after tax, the NAS and the pay deduction. You are taxing the bonds on the amount when it's net off, the gross is net off from the NAS and the tax. The remaining amount of 3000 and not actually gross, the remaining amount that is net off is where you would cut in in terms of determining that that level of net salary will pay bonds. Is that correct? Is on the net? Yes, that's correct. So I, I think what we may need to do for clarity is score a figure like 3400 that time it net off with NIS and pay deductions so that persons are clear, look, we are actually looking at $3,400 a month or 35 that time it nets that result is net off, you can see a clear 3,000 left back. I mean, for clarity for persons, because persons with 3,000 will necessarily be affected if the net off result is 20 or 26, right? So I think if you can quote a figure, if you can do the math and quote a figure of 34, 35, then we can say definitely that's where it starts, rather than saying the gross of 3,000 for clarity. Yeah, so we indicated the gross is actually net um, less the 3000 is taxes, pay come out, and NAS come out. Um, in the examples they would have given, but um, it's fine if you want me to show you an example with the 34 is gross, we can do that too. But you got the principle right. You're correct. It is net. Okay? Okay, so on that note, I am deliberately taking my time to speak because we are moving towards the adjournment of this meeting. And I don't want to do that unless every person present feels that they've been able to raise their questions and be satisfied with the responses. Just one final thing, Mr. Brother Stephen Jackman, you are a you are requested not to leave until you have spoken with the General Secretary of CITUSA. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I just use the opportunity, and it may mean something to some and nothing to others, but we've just gotten word that the extended program our normal program, as well as the extended program with the IMF, has just been approved a few minutes ago. So the country will get 149 million US or 298 million dollars Barbados in another day or two, which will. Um, Kevin is saying it might come today, but anyhow, today or tomorrow. But the important point is that it will strengthen our ability to fight this fight. And Sean, I think that's the point that we were trying to make to you. So we have multiple things out to help us protect the country and to move forward. Thank you. And with that, with, with that information, I think that all Barbadians can feel uh, justifiably proud because after all, we are all in this together. Yeah. Um, just to add something to, when in terms of approving the program, what that means is not only a proof that we have done up to the end of March on track the board program, but a large component of a country going to MF board is to approve the forward-looking program for the next medium term, which is uh, up to 24 months, which means that the plan we are putting in place in terms of our response to COVID, what we expect to come out, all that will be discussed at the board, 
and given the stamp of approval. I say that to say it gives credibility to the fact that what we are doing, the ideas, we are, will still maintain the fundamentals, fiscal stability and debt position. So it's a forward looking element that has been evaluated and approved. Well, with that feel good factor, I think it's an appropriate time that we can now declare this morning session adjourned. Thank you all of you for being here.